stand and face Jerusalem, we're going to open up. Please stand and face Jerusalem. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. Blessed is he that considered the poor. The Lord will deliver him out of, in time of trouble. The Lord will deliver him out of a time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him. The Lord will preserve him. And keep him alive. And keep him alive. And he shall be blessed. And he shall be blessed. Upon the earth. Upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him. And thou will not deliver him. him. Until the will of his enemies. Until the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him. The Lord will strengthen him. Upon the bed of languishing. Upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. I will make all his bed in his sickness. And as for me, and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. And holdest me in my integrity. And settest me before thy face. And set me before thy faith. Forever. Forever. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. God of Israel. God of Israel. From everlasting. From everlasting. And to everlasting. And to everlasting. Amen. Amen. And amen. Our scripture reading was taken from Psalm 41, verses 1, 2, and 3, and verses 12 and 13. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we have a selection by the children's choir.
Give him a bigger hand. Now we have some selections by the adult choir.
found it, we found it.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
for some fine selection. And now we will have the reading of the law. Found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Read it when you get there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go into Revelation chapter 22. Read verses 14 and 15. Read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. We want to thank God for the reading of the law. And if you want to be assured to get salvation, keep them. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. As always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, man have gotten the word of God so twisted and upside down until when people hear it, they just can't believe it. All of our lives, we was taught about going to heaven. We go home at night and we talk to our mothers and our fathers that has passed on. And that let me know one thing. 90% of the people that are in churches do not know what the Lord promised us for serving him. They don't know. All you have to do is listen to the conversation. 
And it will let you know that they do not know what the Lord promised. That's why the Lord called me to put this, together this lesson years ago, this title, The Promise and the Time of Its Fulfillment. The Promise and the Time of Its Fulfillment. We're going to look at this system, brother. This is going to be foreign to everything that you have ever been taught in your church that you came out of. Unless you come out of one of them blessed churches, if you were, then you wouldn't be sitting here in front of me. So we're going to get into this, sister and brother. We're going to show you what Jesus promised his followers that follow him. And we're going to show you when it's going to take place. Because there is a time for everything. And like Solomon said, for every season, there is a purpose. So we're going to start this in Revelation, the third chapter. This is, I remember years ago, a minister told me that they, there's not but two people that go into Revelation. He's a wise man or a fool. Or some way, some reason, people, ministers, don't like to take you to Revelation, sister and brother. But if it's in the, under the cover, then that means that the Lord wants you to read it, don't it? That is right. So we're going to deal with this, sister and brother. We're going to deal it according to the way that the Lord wants us to deal with it. Through the law and the testimony. The law and the testimony. That's the Old and the New Testament. We're going to get some understanding out of this. I don't ever tell people, ever tell people, you know, I hope you understand. No, you're going to understand this. And if you reject it in your mind, then the Lord know it. Because we're going to deal, we deal with nothing but the uncut scripture sisters and brothers. Jesus warned us about people that are standing here where we are in the 24th chapter of St. Matthew when they asked him about the time of his coming and the end of the world. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying that I am the Christ and shall deceive many. I even saw a minister on YouTube mess that up. He said, the Lord tell you that many are going to come, in his, in, 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 uh, uh, come saying they are Christ and shall deceive many. That's why I tell people, bring your own book because we're going to read this together. Revelation, the third chapter, and we're going to look at the promise. And we're going to start reading at verse 20. This is what Jesus promised you. 3 and 20. Go ahead. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh -huh. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Then now he's standing at the door and knock. What door? The door of your mind, sisters and brothers. He's knocking right now. If you hear his voice and open up your mind, he will come into you and sup with you. And into you and sup with you and you with him. What do you mean coming to you? Come in by way of his word, sisters and brothers. You have to explain everything. The Lord is not going to walk into your house or into your mind. Neither is he going to go into your body and take you over. What he's going to do is he's going to influence you by teaching the word. But go ahead and read. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Will I... Rapture you off to heaven. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Will I grant to sit with you, with me in my throne? Go ahead, go ahead and read. Even as I also overcame uh -huh. and have sat down with my father in his throne. See, now Jesus overcame because he became flesh and he was tempted by Satan just like we are. But he overcame and now he is gone to sit with the father on his throne, but he didn't promise you that. He told you, you would... He would grant you to sit with him in his throne. As I came, overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. So now if Jesus promised you that he's going to let you sit with you, him, set, let you sit with him in his throne, it would behoove you to find out where his throne is going to be. Isn't that correct? Right. And wherever that is, that's what you're going to sit. So we're going to go into St. Luke. <clears throat> The first chapter, Luke, the first chapter. People don't read, sisters and brothers. The Lord had his great big old Bible, and nobody reads it. 
Ministers get up, read a verse, and then tell you some pretty story. The prettiest story you can be told out of this Bible, sisters and brothers, is how to get salvation. Anything else is irrelevant. It's all that simple. Now, this is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. Okay, read it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Go ahead. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now, the Lord sent the angel there because he had a message for Mary. Skip down to verse 30. And let's see what that message is. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Now this, now this comes from heaven. People want to honor about the name of Jesus, but I'm rolling with the angel. Yes. You're going to conceive and you're going to have a son. Go ahead and read. And bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus. And going to call his name Jesus. Go ahead and read. He shall be great uh -huh. and shall be called the son of the highest. That's the son of God. You can't get nobody higher than that. Than that. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. See, the father going to give Jesus the throne, sister and brother. He already promised this. But we can't teach you everything in one day. So the Lord God is going to give him the throne of his father, David. And what was David? Was David king over Israel? Yes, sir. So who is he going to rule over? Go ahead. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Uh -huh. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So David was the king of Israel, sisters and brothers, because the Lord name changed Jacob's name to Israel. David's throne was on this earth. Yes, this is the promise. You can't read no other promise, sisters and brothers, except the one that Jesus is going to prepare a place for you, but then we're going to bring that in too because I don't want you leaving here thinking you're going somewhere and you're not. But that's the promise, that he's going to give him the throne of his father, David. Now let's go in the 132nd chapter of Psalm. Yes. Psalm 132. Because the Lord, there's nothing in the New Testament, sisters and brothers, that the Lord had already told you about in the Old Testament. That's why I said that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The prophets, the Lord set it forth, and the Lord did not make no mistake. We're going to read one verse. Psalms 132. And we're going to read verse 11, Psalm 132 and verse 11. Read it. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. Go ahead. He will not turn from it. And he won't change his mind. Go ahead. Of the fruit of thy body will I set up on thy throne. Of the fruit of thy body will I set up on thy throne. See, Jesus was God, but he became man, but he came down through the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David, sisters yes. and brothers. Of the fruit of our body when I set on our throne. Now keep your marker here because we're going to come right back. Keep a marker here. We're coming right back. Now let's go into Acts, the second chapter. Each. Acts chapter two. Because sisters and brothers, people say what they want, but nobody can preach what's written. And that's what we're going to read you, what's written. If it's not written in this Bible, you will not hear it. Y'all hear, hear me? You will not hear it. Make it plain. And when I'm out of town, or either in any other classes, or the Israel of God, somebody tell you something that's not in this Bible, take a good look at them, because you won't see them again. But we've had too many lies, sisters and brothers. We ain't dealing with no lies, no more. Acts chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 22. Acts 2 and 22. 
Okay, go ahead. Ye men of Israel, uh -huh. hear these words. Go ahead. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Go ahead. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Go ahead. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Now he said, who have been delivered by determined counsel? And full knowledge of God, because Jesus is a sin offering. He had to die, but he came. He said, y'all have crucified and slain. Go ahead and read. Whom God has raised up. Go ahead. Having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Because how can death hold God too long? Go ahead and read. For David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. So David spoke of it. Skip down to verse 29, and let's see what else David spoke. Verse 29, go ahead. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us until this day. So what David said was not talking about him because David is dead and is buried. Yes. He has not ascended to heaven. And his grave is with us today. Go ahead and read. Therefore, being a prophet. Therefore, and, being a prophet. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him. And knowing that God has sworn with the oath unto him. That of the fruit of his loins. Of the fruit of his loins. According to the flesh. Uh-huh. He will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. According to the flesh. He will raise up Christ yes, sir. to sit on his throne. Didn't the angel tell Mary that was going to happen? Yes, sir. So the Lord swore that to David. Now let's go back to, one, uh, back to Psalms 132. You should have a marker there. Back to Psalm 132. Because Jesus promised us if we overcome, we're going to sit with him on his throne, didn't he? Yes, sir. So now we're, supposed, now we're going to read about us, his children. That's the spiritual children that have been begotten by this word, sisters and brothers. Yes. I want you all to understand this. We're going to read about us now. Verse 12, go ahead. If thy children will keep my covenant if and those, my testimony. Those are your spirit, your children. If, your chi if thy children will keep your, thy covenant and what? And my testimony. And my testimony. That I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. That's all the sons of Adam. Go ahead and read. For the Lord has chosen Zion. Uh -huh. He has desired it for his habitation. For the Lord has chosen Zion, which is Jerusalem, that we pray toward every Sabbath day. He has desired it for what? For his habitation. What's his habitation mean? His dwelling place. Where he going to dwell at? Where yes, he going to live? Go ahead and read. This is my rest forever. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for Here. I have desired it. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Where did the book say Jerusalem, didn't it? That's right. How is it that you can get away from this? And not. Here is where I will dwell. So he promised that he's going to let us sit on thrones too. Isn't that what we read We now? read that. Let's go into 20th chapter of Revelation. Each. Revelation 20. The Lord has put together an information package for us and we refuse to read it. Because this Bible is to inform you and teach you how to deliver yourself. Because God made you a free agent. That's why I say all the time, we don't enforce the law of the Israel of God. We teach the law. Because God made you a free agent. He said, I set before you good and evil, life and death. Choose life and live. If you choose death, then that's on you. Because I'm going to read this book to you. Can't run away somewhere. Boo said, uh-uh-uh. Boo didn't say, boo Ray. And, and, to make, and to be sure, I got plenty of witnesses that I read it. You know who my witnesses are? You are, because you're reading it with me. 20 and 1, go ahead and read. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, 
having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Go ahead. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, he laid this one angel. I'm pretty sure that was Michael because he can handle Satan. And he laid hold on him. What did he call him? Laid hold on him. On that dragon, that old serpent. Yep. Now you know that serpent in, in the Garden of Eden wasn't a snake, don't you? <laughs> That's learning yourself on your way, learning something on your way to learning something. He put him away for a thousand years. Why? Because God, when Jesus is here, he is not going to brook no interference from a rebellious angel. They're going to lock him up. I'm pretty sure he's going to lock all his minions up with him too. Yeah. But skip down to verse 4 and continue. And I saw thrones, uh -huh. and they sat upon them. And I saw a throne. I saw thrones. I saw thrones, and he, and they, and they sat upon them. So you see more than one throne here, don't we? Yes, Go right. ahead and read. And judgment was given unto them. And they were standing in judgment. And judgment was given unto them. They were the judgment. Don't you know 90% of the world don't understand that everybody is not going to stand in judgment day? You're going to be sitting in the judgment seat. Instead of being the judge, the, being judged, you're going to be the judge. That is right. Why not go for the first so you don't have to deal with that white throne and wonder if your name is in that book? And judgment is given unto them. Go ahead and read. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Go ahead. And for the word of God. Uh -huh. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon don't, their foreheads. Don't you know that most people don't even know what the beast is? Who the beast is? They don't know about his mark, which he going to put in your forehead and in your hand, even though they practice it on you every Ash Wednesday. And ain't nobody paying it no attention. They are practicing you, uh, preparing you to receive the mark of the beast. Yeah. See people walking around, dirt in their right hand. You know it's never in the left hand. Right hand. Dirt in the forehead. You yeah. know it's never on the chin in the back of the head. Forehead. It is where the Lord said he's going to put it so you will know that these people are preparing you to get cut off. But ain't nobody listening. Sometimes, sisters and brothers, I sit in my den and I get so sad I almost go into a depression because I think about what's happening to people. Which have not received a mark of the beast in the head in their forehead. Go ahead and read. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. You mean you get to rule with Jesus? Yes, sir. Go ahead. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Go ahead and read. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. How many of you in your church did you come out of heard of the first resurrection? Go ahead and read. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Go ahead and read. On such the second death hath no power, the but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The second death is a leg of fire. It ain't going to have no power over you because you're going to rule with Jesus a thousand years. Each. A thousand years, sisters and brothers, on this earth. So if you're going to rule with Jesus, then you're going to be set on thrones also. So let's go and find out what these thrones are called. Let's go into Psalm chapter 122. Each. Psalm 122. Brother told me one time, brother, you know, I, uh, you, you know I, I'll listen to you, man, but uh, uh, sometime... Uh, I don't think I, I, I come back to you. And look at me like it's going to make me sad. It remind me when my daughter was a baby. Don't, Daddy, if you do whatever she wanted me to do, I eat all of my breakfast. I'm looking at her like, hey, the breakfast is for your benefit. It ain't for mine. <laughs> The 
So you don't come back here. I'm not, I grieve. Not for your absence, because of your absence, I grieve for your salvation. Because you better make sure you get it right. Because if it's not according to this book, it don't mean anything. So Jesus promised you where he was going to let you sit. Psalm 122, Psalm 122, and we're going to read verse 1. Psalm 122 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh boy, I know we're going to heaven sure enough now, ain't we? <laughs> because we are going to the house of the Lord. But let's keep reading anyway. Go ahead. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Oh, O Jerusalem. Not on the 20 feet east of Mars. Nope. Oh, Jerusalem, go ahead and read. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Go ahead. Where did the tribes go up? Uh -huh. The tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. See, the tribes are going to go up there once the Lord is back, but go ahead and read. For there are set thrones of judgment. For there are set thrones, not a throne, did it? There are set thrones of judgment. Go ahead and read. The thrones of the house of David. The thrones of the house of David. It's called thrones of judgment. Why is they called the house of, the, uh, thrones of the house of David? Because didn't the Lord tell you that his throne was going to be on David's throne? Right. Didn't the Lord tell you that he was going to give the throne of David to Jesus? And Jesus probably promised you that you're going to sit with him in his throne. In his throne. So these thrones of the house of David, you're going to be sitting on one of them. That's if you continue in this word, sisters and brothers, you will be sitting on one of them. And every time the Lord make a promise to his servants, it's always consistent that what he say in Revelation. Let's go into Matthew, the 19th chapter. Each. All of this stuff we read, why is it that it's not read in the church's system, brothers? If God didn't want you to read it, it wouldn't be here. And Peter asked a reasonable question. Maybe you should ask this same question. And maybe you understand the answer because it's simple. Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 27. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27. 19 and 27. Read it. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And, and he said, we have forsaken all and followed you. You got to do the same thing too. So he says, what, shall we, what are we going to get... What's our payment? Go ahead and read. And Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, Go ahead. that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. You, when you, you which have followed me in the resurrection. Yes, sir. Remember a gentleman sent me an email or something from Texas telling me, well, in the regeneration don't mean resurrection. What is it? What else is it? Ye in the regeneration? When, when the son, go ahead. When the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, uh -huh. you also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Do I need to interpret that? Nope. He said, when I come and sit on my throne, y'all gonna sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You mean all of Israel is gonna be in heaven? God called Israel and Judah these two evil families, didn't yeah. he? Even the Lord showed you this, sisters and brothers. When I sit on my throne, in other words, when I get my kingdom, when the Father give me my kingdom, I'm going to give you a kingdom. Let's go and let Daniel tell us about it. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. We're just reading this book, sisters and brothers. That's why we call ourselves the Israel of God, Bible study class. Even though Bible study class is not in our title, our official title, but still 
it is a sub for us. Bible study class. Person asked me, when do y'all have Bible class? I said, every Sabbath day. Bring your pen, your paper, and patience, because you're going to learn something. You're going to come out of here and be as dumb as you were when you walked in. And I don't mean that as an insult. So I changed that and said, and be as uninformed as you was when you came in here. Forgive me. Every now and then, my old street boy sneaks out of me. I had to slap him back. <laughs> Don't go back to my thuggery. <laughs> Seven and one. Seven and one. <laughs> go ahead and read. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Uh -huh. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Now, these four winds of heaven, sisters and brothers, he's not talking, you can't see wind, can you? So how do you know that it's walking on the great sea? But no, this talking about Three, four great nations, sisters and brothers, and the sea are the people. That's why the Lord let you know. It's written, you know, that the people are, wa are the water. So these four great beasts, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, in that order. And the Roman Empire is supposed to fall and rise ten times. Yes. Sisters and brothers, we are witnessing the tenth resurrection right there in Western Europe. It's under the name of the European Union. This thing is right up on us. So the Lord said, in, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And we looking at them, right? Four great beasts rose up from among the people. That's the sea. Go ahead. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. And all of them was different, sisters and brothers. That's why I got the title of the book that the Lord caused me to write, The Four Winds of Heaven, from this. And they're all different one from another. But then at the end of their time, in fact, Jesus is the one that's going to end it. So we're not dealing with this, that lesson. We're dealing with the promise. So skip down to verse 13, because here comes Jesus now. Because the brother said to me one time, look here, brother, you know, I don't know about a New Testament. He even called the New Testament a devil's book. What? And I said, I just can't believe you're going to bring to me the that, uh, the pie in the sky. That's the Old Testament, right? Yeah. I said, let's go into Daniel's and we're going to read verse 13. <laughs> 7 and 13, read it. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. I said, wait a minute, who is this man? <laughs> He's looking at it. He's looking at me. <laughs> Never answer. This is the Old Testament, isn't it? I saw one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Go ahead and read. And came to the Ancient of Days. Now that's the Father. Both of them are ancient, but this is the Father. Go ahead and read. And they brought him near before him. Uh huh. And there was giving him dominion uh -huh. and glory and a kingdom. Go ahead. To all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. Go ahead. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So what, who did the angel tell Mary that was going to give Jesus a kingdom? Then he said, the Lord God? The Lord God, the Father. Daniel just confirmed it. But I want you to put your marker here. Because he said, I'm going to give, the Lord God gave him the throne of his father David. Here he said, the Lord God gave him dominion and glory and power and all other dominions are going to serve him. Now let's go, because we're going to come right back here, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Luke, this 22nd chapter, and see what Jesus said. Luke chapter 22. So we read this together. And I want you walking out here saying, well, you know, boy say, uh-uh, you read it. And the Lord going to hold your feet to the fire if you try to change it. Uh, people play with the Lord too much. You, that means that you don't have no understanding. You do not play with this guy. He got mad and drowned the whole world. Yeah, you play did. with him? 
Verse 8, 22 and 8. Verse 22, uh, uh, Luke chapter 22 and verse 8. Okay, read it. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. See, Jesus kept the Passover, sisters, brother. He didn't keep Easter. He kept the Passover. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. I have desired to eat this last supper. No, no, eat the Passover. With you before what? Before I suffer. Go ahead and read. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, in another lesson, we'll, know, we'll let you know why he said that. But skip down. But that's another lesson. But skip down to verse 28. Verse 28 and go ahead. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. These are his apostles here. He said, these are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Temptation. He's talking about his apostles here. Yep. Go ahead and read. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed to me. We saw when the father did that, didn't we? Yes, sir. What you going to do then? Go ahead and read. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. That ye may eat and drink with me in my kingdom. He didn't say nothing about the Father's kingdom no. right now, did he? No. We're talking one kingdom, isn't that correct? So now, when we saw what the Lord's kingdom was, was not that on the earth? That's what I read. Right. It was on earth. And he said, you, that you might eat and drink at my table, in my kingdom, and do what? And sit on thrones. And sit on thrones. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I say again, then he told the promised apostles, y'all ain't going to have to be judged. You're going to be the judge. That is right. I'm going to give you a assignment. You are going to be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel ain't gonna go to heaven, sisters and brother. You mean the whole nation? When Paul said all Israel shall be saved, he wasn't talking about the physical part. He was talking about the spiritual Israel. Make it plain. Now let's go back to Luke. Okay. Back to uh, Daniel's and finish this. Because he said, and the father gave him dominion and greatness and he's going to rule the nation forever and ever. And Daniel's wanted to know what is this. He saw the coming of the Lord, and the Father's going to give him a kingdom. But where did he get, to get the kingdom from? He took it away from man. Right. The Gentile. That's the last one of Noah's son that's going to rule. The times of the Gentile. That's why it's called the times of the Gentile. 7 and 15. 7 and 15. Okay, go ahead. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit uh -huh. and in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. He said, they troubled me. Go ahead and read. I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So let me know what I'm looking at. Go ahead and read. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. And so he interpreted to me. Let me know what I was looking at. And what, what did he say? These great beasts. These great beasts. Go ahead. Which read. are four. Uh huh. Are four kings. But it actually is four kingdoms, sisters and brother. Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome are four kingdoms. Go ahead and read. Which shall arise out of the earth. That's that. But it say, come up from the water, which shall arise from among the people out of the earth. Go ahead and read. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Who going to take the kingdom? The saints. For the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Go ahead. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And possess the kingdom forever and ever. Where is this kingdom located? 
Skip down to verse 27 and let's find out. Verse 27. Okay, read it. And the kingdom. And the kingdom. And dominion. And dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom. And the greatness of the kingdom. Under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven. Not in heaven. Under the whole heaven. Go ahead and read. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. They're going to be given to the people. These are the people in the first resurrection. The saints of the most high, go ahead and read. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh huh. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. Didn't he tell you he's going to let us rule with him a thousand years? On this earth. Under the whole heaven, sisters and brothers. You cannot get off this earth. But you are the saints if you make that first resurrection. That's what it means when it says two women. Uh, 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 grinding grinding meal. Yeah. One gonna be taken and the other left. That means that one gonna be in the first resurrection. They're gonna meet the Lord when he's coming down. They ain't going to heaven. They're gonna come back to this earth. But the earth, other one that's left, that's the one that's gonna have to wait until the last resurrection. Where your salvation is iffy. Do it right now and you don't have to worry about I wonder if I'm gonna make it. The saints are going to take the king. That's right. They're going to rule. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, because this has been told to you. There is no reason why you should not know this, sisters and brothers. And people acting like I got, you know, I, they got a choice when, the, when it comes to the word of God. You know, I choose to think this. The Lord tell you he's going to put before you life and death. Right. Choose life and live. But if you choose death, he's going to give it to you. Oh, Lord, please and save me in spite of myself. Uh -uh, I ain't going to save in spite of yourself. I'm going to cut you off because of yourself. <laughs> First Corinthians 6 chapter. We're going to start at verse 1. Because Paul is charging these people by going to the law when they have a problem. But that was in that day. Right now, <laughs> it's a little different. When somebody embezzles you or takes something from you or do something to you. But then that's another story. Six and one. Go ahead and read. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? And uh, so you, you're going to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. That's when the Lord gave us some autonomy in. Right. Go ahead and read. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? This is what people don't understand. This never. People read all over Paul's writing. Yeah. But when they get to this, they skip it. When is it? When the saint will judge the world. When? You ain't judging it now. The judge is being ruled by the anti-saints right now. <laughs> That's what's ruling the world right now. Right? So when you going to rule it? Go ahead and read. And if the world shall be judged by you, uh -huh. are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Isn't that something? He's talking about judging the world, but go ahead and read. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Look, we're going to judge angels. Man, one angel can come in here and kill everybody in a matter of minutes. How you going to judge him? Because then you will be God. That is right. This is what the world don't know. Know you not that you are going to judge angels? That's why I look at people bickering all the time. Even in the congregation, even sometime in the Israel of God, people bickering. We don't want to work with this person. I don't want to work with that person. Got an attitude with one another. With this kind of knowledge, you shouldn't have nothing but love. Teach. <laughs> if you have aught with your sister and brother, you're supposed to do what the Lord said. Go make peace with them. Otherwise, he don't even want your offering. People set up that I'm a servant of God. You can't deal, you can you don't love your sister and your brother. Always got something ugly and nasty to say about them. You can't work with them. That puzzled me. And you want to judge the world and you want to have the power to judge the angels? 
That's what's going to happen with the servants of God, sisters and brothers. If you're a saint, you're going to run it. But your practice ground and your preparation is being made here and now. Yes, sir. Let's go in 147 chapters. Yes, Psalm. sir. Psalm 147. This is what the average person don't know. What you're doing is you are auditioning to become God. God ain't going to give you absolute power and you got a foul attitude. He ain't creating no more Satan. Teach. Teach. You should be glad when the Sabbath day comes so you can grab up to your sisters and brothers and hug them. Give them a hold of it. Kiss. But I got people in, certain, in, in, in some of the congregation, they got issues with their sisters and their brothers. You're serving a God, how come you can't sit down and talk it out? Psalm 149, because we are auditioning become the saints with the power to rule angels. And only God can rule angels, sisters and brothers. Psalm 149, we're going to read verse 1, and we're going to skip. Psalm 149 and verse 1. Read it. Praise ye the Lord. Uh-huh. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Because you're among the saints, you should be praising the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. In the congregation of the saints. Yes. Why? Wow. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and go ahead. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Uh-huh. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Go ahead and read. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Wait a minute. A two-edged sword in their hand? What are they going to do with a sword? To execute vengeance upon the heathen uh -huh. and punishments upon the people. Yes, because that's what's going to happen. You're a saint. You're going to help the Lord raise up a righteous generation. Peace. And you are not going to brook any mess. To do what? Go ahead and read. To bind their kings with chains uh -huh. and their nobles with fetters of iron. Go ahead. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. Now, you want to be able to do this? Then you better do some sanitizing of your personal mind, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you're going for a big prize. You're going to be God, and you're going to be a ruler. You're going to run this entire earth. I mean, every inch of it. If you are a saint, if you are among the people in the first resurrection. Let's go into Revelation, the second chapter. Make it plain. Because people don't understand this. If you understand this, then you don't get caught off in, in, in petty foolishness. When it come up, you try to fix it. And you never be a part of it. You don't have time for this. You're too busy learning how to become God. You're too busy preparing yourself and adi an additional, additioning to run this planet. Because you ain't getting off of it. Except for to meet the Lord in the air, then you're coming right back down to it. To it. Revelation 2, we're going to start at verse 18. 2 and 18. Okay, read. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Uh, now, he's told these churches, but he's talking to us too. Go ahead and read, because we're a part of the churches, no matter where they are. Go ahead and read. I know thy works, uh -huh. and charity, and service, and faith, and pain, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Now, Lord, I know that. I mean, even every individual. That's why you have to watch yourself. Yeah. I know your work. Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. 
And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. Wait a minute now. You can get saved, and once you save, you're until always saved. Until the end. You have to come, overcome it, and keep his works to how long? Until the end. So much for always saved, isn't it? Go ahead and read. To him will I give power over the nation. To him will I give power over the nation. Daniel's told you. John told you. Yeah. Luke told you. And all of the prophecies tell you when you have eyes to see. The Lord said to him that overcome, will I give power over the nation? And what you going to do? Go ahead and read. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And you're going to rule them with a rod of iron. That means you ain't taking no mess. Lord, I tell you in Isaiah, you're going to hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, brother. Yeah. Walk therein. And if you don't go with the word, then you're going to come with the rebar. And what's that going to do to your head? Go ahead and read. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. During that thousand year of landing period, he, the thousand years of rule, the Lord is not going to take no mess. But I want you to understand that this is going to take place on this earth. Let's go over to Revelation, the fifth chapter. Revelation chapter five, because the Lord had made it clear. So you can't stand before him on judgment day and plead ignorance. Well, Lord, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Hey, I gave you a book. It was on your dresser. Remember that dresser you got? <laughs> that book that collected dust? Yeah. You should have opened it. Because if you had opened it, you would have seen what I wrote in the 20th chapter of Revelation. And the books was open. And the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the book. But if you never wrote, read it, then you don't know what you're being judged out of. Revelation 5 and verse 1. This is the father here. Go ahead and read. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Go ahead. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? See, this is the father who had a book in his hand. It was sealed with seven seals. And this is not talking about just Revelation. This is the entire Bible. It is sealed with seven seals. That means it is really sealed. That means it's hard to read this book unless somebody come and read it and make it simple for you. Go ahead and read. And no man in heaven. No man in heaven. No in earth. No in earth. Neither under the earth. Neither under the earth. Was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. That means can't no preacher interpret this book. Teach. You have to let the book interpret the book. How absolute is no man. Absolute. Now, if you're on earth, you're living, or if you're dead, <laughs> that means you're in the earth, you still can't interpret this book. So don't get on your knees and say, you know, Daddy, I know you was a great preacher. Could you explain this to me? He ain't going to answer you. Go ahead and read. And I wept much and because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look down. No man was found worthy. He said, so I cried. Not only could he open the book, he couldn't even look on it. Go ahead and read. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Uh -huh. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Go ahead. the root of David, uh -huh. has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Jesus. Jesus, sister and brother. He has prevailed to open the book. Skip down and we're going to start this at verse 7 instead of verse 8. Verse 7, go ahead. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat up on the throne. So Jesus came and took the book out of the hand of the Father. So much for the people that are teaching that Jesus and, and the Father is just one person. Ooh, we make it plain. Some say, well, you know, he's one person with two personalities. Some say one person with three personalities. 
He was the Father in the creation, the Son in redemption, and now he's the Holy Ghost in the church. How can he take the brook from himself? <laughs> it's time to dispense with the foolishness. And he did what? Go ahead. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts of four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, Go ahead. which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song. And, and they come, and they look, this, 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 with this full of odors, that's the prayer of the saints, sisters and brothers. Yes. Because uh, the saints need some prayer. And what did they sing? Go ahead. Nine. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That lets you know who it was then, don't you? The one that was slain and, and we were uh, 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 redeemed by his blood. But it say, out of every kindred, tongue, and nation. You know, some of my Hebrew brothers running around talking about, see, that's talking about Israel is scattered all over the world, and he's going to bring us from every kindred, tongue, and nation. No, that's talking about from every one of the sons of Adam that do this thing right. Yes. And the brothers running around telling that lie, Gentile going to be sitting in your seat. Teach. And what's he going to do with you once he redeem you? Go ahead and read. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And made us to our God king and priests. Go ahead and read. <laughs> and we shall reign on the earth. And we shall fly around in heaven. Reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. This is Revelation here, sisters and brothers. Last book. This is the last book in the Bible. Heat. You cannot circumvent that. So now we know what the promise is, don't we? That's right. But now, when is this promise going to be fulfilled? I don't see no saints running this earth right now. Nope. Absolutely not. And I haven't read when no saints didn't went to heaven either. So when is this going to be fulfilled? Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. I'm not going to lie, sisters and brothers, it bothers me sometimes yeah. when I listen to people teach and then I listen to people defend that bad doctrine with no Bible. Then trying to get you caught up in Paul's writing. Peter warned you about Paul's writing. Yeah, he did. If you don't have some good knowledge, you get twisted in some of Paul's writing. Second Timothy chapter two, uh, chapter four, brother, and we're gonna read it. Start at verse one. Second Timothy four and verse one, four and one, because we reading this together, are we not? We are. Go ahead. I charge thee, be therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Wait a minute. He just told you something here that that debunks the whole. Heaven theory. Yep. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's the living and the dead, at his kingdom. Is his kingdom here? No. So if somebody's in heaven, haven't they been judged to be good? If you're in hell, haven't you been judged to be evil? That's why you there. That means Jesus didn't have to come then. We just read a lie. Go ahead. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Preach your emotion. Preach the word. Preach the word. Go ahead and read. Be instant in season. Uh huh. Out of season. Go ahead. Reprove. Well, I don't argue the Bible. What does this mean? Reprove. Go ahead. Rebuke. Rebuke. Somebody lying? Rebuke them. You lying, mister. Go ahead and read. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And you exhort with all long and doctrine. You lying, mister, then you whip that book out on him. Read it to him. 
But look what Paul said. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. For I am now ready to be offered. Uh -huh. And the time of my departure is at hand. Go ahead. I have fought a good fight. Uh -huh. I have finished my course. Go ahead. I have kept the faith. He's letting you know. This walk is a process. You just can't get saved today. Now I'm saved. Now I can do whatever I want. Uh-uh. He have fought a good fight. Yeah. He has kept the faith. Go ahead and read. His fourth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I got a crown of righteousness laid up for me. So I'm going to get it when I die. We better keep reading. Uh, Go ahead and read. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Which he shall give me at that day. We're going to find out what that day is. Go ahead and read. But not to me only. Not to me only. But to all of them also that love is appearing. But to all of them also that love his appearance. That means that day is when he comes. That is right. But we're going to let the Bible back up and confirm what's written in the Bible. Let's go into Revelation 22nd chapter. Okay. Revelation chapter 22. Make it plain. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I be trying to watch them ministers on YouTube. I mean, I be trying. I be, <laughs> after a while, I skip it. I turn on me some blues. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation 22, we're going to read one verse. Verse 12. 22 and 12. Read it. And behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his works. But he said, my reward is with me. It's just like I get a telephone call from some of my grandchildren. Papa, I need $100. Okay, I'll be over there. And when I get there, I'm going to give him the $100. You know why? Can't give them to him before because the $100 is with me. <laughs> yeah. That means you don't get it till I get there. See, they don't ask for $10 no more. That's simple. <laughs> it's all that simple. But now Isaiah told you about this. Now let's go into Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, chapter 40. We get all them young cats talking about, you know, old Buddha got old, he need to be getting out the way. And when I look at you, boy, I'm glad I'm old. Because <laughs> when I was coming up, we used to be in Washington Park, a modern day Mars Hill. We'd be out there, people from every so-called religion, we'd be out there dealing with this book and dealing with what's the word of God. I used to fight with the Muslim, fight with the hard Israelite. Fight with the Harry Christians. Fight with the, uh, uh, what do they call the uh, uh, one that wear the fringes? Moors. The Moors. And, and, and the so-called guys that thought they were wiser than everybody called themselves sages. I used to fight, but now I went out there this last holiday. Right. Nobody out there. I even walked up on the stage and just stood there and reminisced for a while. Almost started crying. Because these young people don't care nothing about knowledge. They don't feel God. They don't know what's going on in the world or what's going to happen to the no world knowledge. tomorrow and don't care. I stood there and I just looked. I was in my 20s. I was in the middle of a big argument. Arguing with old men because I was the boy in the crowd. So, these youngsters don't care nothing about knowledge, therefore we don't know nothing. Therefore, when you go to church, then you thinking in your mind that somebody's in heaven. They've been rewarded. But according to the word of God, it don't say that. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm glad that I come up in an age where people value knowledge. And they sought out information. Yes. They wanted to know what's going on now and what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, used to be hundreds and thousands of us out there. 
And we used to go at it too. I'm telling you, ain't nobody joking serious. You come up and you put a lie out there and it was proven. They just didn't polite you say, well, you know, brother, you're incorrect. They're going to call you a liar and then they're going to stump you. <laughs> they're going to abuse you. <laughs> so next time you open your mouth, you're going to know what you're talking about. That's right. That's right. Isaiah 40 and verse 1. Go ahead. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, said your God. Comfort ye my people, said your God. Skip down to verse 5 and read it. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, uh -huh. and all flesh shall see it together. Didn't it tell you in Revelation, the fifth chapter, he come with the clouds and every eye going to see him? That's right. All flesh going to see him together. Go ahead and read For it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. For the mouth of the Lord has said it. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand. The Lord God will come with strong arm. And his arm, and his arm shall rule for him. And his arm going to rule for him? Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. His reward is with him. Yes. And his work before him. So if you want to wait, get the reward, you got to wait till he come. Like my grandkid had to wait till I get there with the $100. That's right. Can't get it before. Can't get it before. Let's back up to Isaiah the 26th chapter. Isaiah chapter 26. There ain't no need to get up and make no pretty story. You got a lot of stories in this book to That's be told. Right. Ones that make a difference. Isaiah 26 and verse 19. Go ahead. This is Isaiah talking now. People talking about, you know, ain't, you know, people in the New Testament, see, see, the Old Testament don't talk about the resurrection. What? I said, what book you been reading? Oh, I forgot. They even took the old, some of them took the Old Testament. It's not even under the cover with the New Testament now. My antenna would go up. Why is it that you took away the Old Testament? Yeah, why you do that? Huh? <laughs> Half a book. Let's see what Isaiah is talking about here. Verse 19, go ahead. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they rise. Oh, they're going to rise. So what the preacher said at the funeral, that that's not him in the box, is a lie, ain't it? Ah. So he done made his homecoming. Uh -uh. He's looking down from heaven smiling. So you telling me that that ain't Brother Fox there? That's what he looked like yesterday before he kicked the bucket. Thy dead man shall live, with my dead bodies shall they arise. Go ahead and read. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. Wait a minute, what you doing in the dust? You're supposed to be in heaven. In the dust. Okay, go ahead. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. And the earth going to cast out the dead. We're going to find out when that's going to happen. Go ahead and read. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Go ahead. And shut thy doors about thee. Go ahead. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Now until, let's hide yourself where? Well in the grave. Yeah. As for well, a little moment, what's going to happen? Go ahead. Until the indignation be overpassed. Until the great tribulation is passed. For and behold, all the indignation before that. Go ahead and read. For behold, the Lord co cometh out of his place he to punish the inhabitants of the earth. But the Lord cometh out of his place, which is heaven, ain't it? That's right. To punish the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead and read. For their iniquity. Uh huh. The earth also shall disclose her blood. And the earth shall also disclose his blood. And shall no more cover her slain. Because he's going to have a resurrection. Coming up out of there, sister and brother. But that is not going to happen until the Lord come out of his place, sisters and brothers. Not a day before. Let's let Paul confirm this. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Not a day before. I don't know why people don't read this book. I don't know why people sit down and let people preach to them and don't put no evidence on the table. None. You know what the evidence is? What's in your lap. You said that's the way it is. Show me some evidence. Put it on the table. Let's read it together. When somebody's suing you for some money, don't they have to put some evidence on the table? When you're suing them, don't you have to come with some evidence? Yep. How is it for the greatest prize in the whole creation, How you don't need no evidence? Yes. 
Can't nothing be greater than becoming God. Nothing. God loves you so much that he's going to make you the same as he is. And you don't care. You're spitting on it. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to start at verse 21. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 21. Okay, go ahead. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Because death wasn't in Adam's creation till he ate from the wrong tree. Right. By man also came the resurrection of the dead. That's why Jesus had to become man. Because man brought death, he had the man had to take it out. Go ahead and read. For as in Adam all die, Go ahead. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. But every man in his own order. Go ahead. Christ the first fruits. Right. Christ the first fruit. Go ahead. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. After they that are Christ at his coming. Is Jesus here? No. Well then where are the dead? In the grave. Even the wicked. How is it that you don't understand that? Is that hard to understand? We all read that. Is there anybody that don't understand what you just read? Please raise up your hand. I don't see one hand. Continue to read. 24. Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. That's right. The Lord and came. And he's going he to straighten it out. Yeah. Then cometh the end. Go ahead and read. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Go ahead. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. See, Jesus, gonna, Jesus is the one going to straighten everything out on this earth, on this earth before the Father come. He's going to put out all rule and all authority yes. and power. Go ahead and read. For he must reign. Till he have put all enemies under his feet. And what is the last enemy? Go ahead and read. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Look, the Lord put enemy or uh, uh, death in the creation because of man's sin. Yes. And once he get through with his sanitizer during a thousand years, then he's going to take death off the table. Ain't going to be no more dying. Then he's going to turn it over to the Father. Skip down and read verse 28. Verse 28. Go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So when Jesus set everything in order, terminate death, then he's going to turn over to, over to the Father. He's going to become subject to the Father. This is the order of things, sisters and brothers. But until that time comes, Jesus is the one that's going to rule this earth. Let's go into Matthew, the 25th chapter. Yes. Matthew, chapter 25. That people wasting their time making pretty stories in the Bible. People in the church wasting their time hating on one another, saying ugly things about one another. Sister and brother come to school. Come to church, they're supposed to come happy and leave happy. Some leave crying. I know because they get on the phone and they call me. And the perpetrators are in the church that's supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost. How is it, sisters and brothers, that you can come and grieve your sisters and your brothers on the Lord's Sabbath day? How can you do that and expect to get salvation? Oh, I love the Lord. The Lord said, how can you love him in whom you've never seen and you don't love your brother in whom you see every day? <laughs> Matthew 25. We're going to start at verse 31. 25 and verse 31. Okay, go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. So he ain't coming by himself. See, when he come up out of heaven, he's going to bring all the holy angels. The only one going to be left up there is the Father. All the angels coming with him. Go ahead and read. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. What throne is that? 
David's throne. David! I mean, he's coming. Our people are, when the Lord comes, the Lord is coming, the Lord's coming, but I'm going to heaven. Then you're going to pass right on by him. <laughs> he told you in his prayer, thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We don't listen. So when the son of man comes, he's going to sit on the throne of his glory. Go ahead and read. And before him shall be gathered all nations. I mean, he's going to rule everybody. Go ahead and read. And he shall separate them one from another uh -huh. as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. So he's going to separate the good from the evil, individual and the nation. Go ahead and read. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Go ahead. But the goats on the left. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Go ahead. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now these are one on the right hand. But these are people that have not made the resurre first resurrection. The first resurrection is past now. But then during that thousand years of rule, he's going to separate the wicked from the righteous. And the righteous he's going to set his in his right hand, yes. on his right hand, he's going to say to him, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Wait a minute, Brother Buddha, already in Jesus' kingdom. So whose kingdom is that? Let's go find out. Let's go into Revelation 21st chapter. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 21. See, we're not playing here, sister and brother. We, I'm giving you this word. Now, what you do with it is your business. And if you do wrong... And stand in judgment, I'm going to be in that first resurrection. I'm going to be the one looking down at you. Uh-huh. You should have listened to me. Yeah. But Brother Boo, I know you. Yeah, okay. Angel, do your job. <laughs> like a fire. Come ye, blessed of the Father, and head the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Here it is, Revelation 21, and start at verse 1. 21 and 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. That doesn't mean he created all new. That means other uh, scripture will let you know he renewed the face yes. of the earth. Another scripture and another lesson will show you where the Lord said the earth abide forever. So now the earth was first fixed for flesh and blood men, but now the earth is prepared for God. Yes, sir. So what it takes to sustain us, it don't take to sustain God. Therefore, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Go ahead. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Apparently, them mortals don't need no seas. Go ahead and read. And I, John, saw the holy city, uh -huh. New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Go ahead. Prepared as a bride adored for her husband. Come ye, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Yes. That means it's been around from day one. If yes. we had done day one, we'd probably be in the kingdom right now, the Father's kingdom, on this earth. If it was prepared for you from the foundation of the world, that means you could have possessed it in the That's foundation right. of the world, couldn't you? When our father and our mother messed up. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Wait a minute. That mean we ain't coming there? It's with me? With us? Go ahead yes. and read. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and so, be their God. So he is coming to be with us. Keep reading. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death. How come there ain't no more death? Jesus terminated yes. it, didn't he? Go ahead and read. Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. For the former things are passed away. Think about this, sisters and brothers. Let's think about this. This new Jerusalem. Yeah. This is the heavenly kingdom that men say that we're going up to be in. But we read in the book, tell you the kingdom is coming down to us With on earth. I mean, this man will turn this thing upside down. 
Just about what you learn in the church that you come out of, you should throw it in the toilet and flush it. Then they're going to read where the Lord went to prepare a place for us and put you in heaven. We're going to read that too. We're going to dissect that. You ain't got two more places after this too. I know I'm letting you out early so you can go and pollute the Sabbath day. <laughs> Let's go into St. John, the 14th chapter. St. John, chapter 14. Because sisters and brothers, the Lord had made this thing so easy until if you get cut off, you have to try real hard. You're going to ignore it because somebody tell you that uh, what you don't know won't hurt you. That's the biggest lie I've mm. ever been told. Everything that ever hurt me, if I had known about it before, I wouldn't have got hurt. I would have avoided it. In fact, this, whole, the whole, this, this man is built upon a foundation of lies. St. John 14, we're going to start reading at verse 1. St. John 14 and verse 1. Read it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, my Hebrew brothers need to listen to this. You say you believe in the Father, but yeah. believe in the Son too. Go ahead and read. In my Father's house are many mansions. In my Father's house are many mansions. Go ahead and read. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He said, if it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that's where the minister stopped. Don't go no further. No further. But look what else he said. Go ahead. And if I go. And if I go. And prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. I will come again. I will come again. That's why you have to keep reading. Go ahead and read. And receive you unto myself. And receive you unto my self. Go ahead and read. That where I am. That where I am. There you may be also. There you may be also. The last time we looked, he had came again, right? So if you're going to, he's going to receive you. That means that he's going to receive you to the place where he came. Isn't that correct? That's right. I will come again. I'm at your house. And I said, look here, man. Next week, I'm going to come back here. If I don't come back to your house, then I didn't come back there again, did I? That's right. So he went to prepare a place for you. That place is New Jerusalem. But let's go into Hebrews and look at it. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews chapter 11. Because the word of God is not complicated, sisters and brothers. All you have to do is read this book. And when you get off, even when you get off in Paul's writing and you get tangled up in it, remember what Peter said. We have a most sure word of prophecy. That's right. Peter's the one that the Lord left the keys of the kingdom with. He didn't give them to Paul. He gave them to Peter. Don't you know that uh, 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 Peter was the one the first one that preached to the Gentiles under the new covenant, Peter was the one that circumcised, that, that uh, baptized the Gentiles in the new covenant. Paul was uh, uh, appointed to the uh, apostle to the Gentile, but God used Peter to open the door so Paul can go in. So who are you going to listen to? Peter. I'm going to listen to Peter. And you know what Peter said? We have a most sure word of prophecy. That's when you get tangled up in Paul's right. I'm saying, I'm not saying that Paul's right and wrong. No, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is he's dealt with so many people, so many nationalities until he said things that don't resonate with us. But the people he was talking to heard it perfectly. Y'all understand? When you get a chance to give you a good idea of what I'm talking about, Read all of Paul's right, and then go read the book of Hebrews. Paul wrote that too. But when you read the book of Hebrews, all of it is understandable. You know why? Because he is teaching some people that have some understanding. You cannot teach a college grad, a, 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 a elementary student like you would a college grad. 
Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. God, who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 11. No, chapter 11, rather, in oh, verse 1. My bad. That was your bad? My bad. Okay, then. I'll let you live. I'm merciful. 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what you mean. That's what faith is. You know, you're something you're hoping for, and evidence of things you're not seeing. We have not seen the kingdom of God, but we believe it, don't we? That's right. That's what faith is. Merely belief. Go ahead and read. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And by it, the elders have received a reward. A good report. All they have obtained was a good report. They talk about all of these people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, Sarah, all of them. Yes. But what happened? Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13 and continue. These all died in faith. All of these... Uh, uh, elders died in faith. Go ahead and read. Not having received the promises. Go ahead. But having seen them afar off uh -huh. and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So you see them far off and you embrace them. So now you become a stranger with pilgrims. You ain't going to let nobody tell you that Sunday, the first day of the week, is the Lord's Sabbath day. No. You ain't going to let nobody tell you you can eat any beast. No. Lord, you pray over it. You ain't going to let nobody tell you that Jesus was born on the 25th day of December. He died on Easter Friday, uh, Easter, uh, uh, on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. You ain't going with that option. That new, you know what that makes you? A stranger. Then they're going to avoid you. They want to hang out with you. You know what, you have, what they have done with you? They have sanctified you. Because you're a stranger and you're a pilgrim up on this earth. What verse was that? We have verse 14. Go ahead and read. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Look, you seeking another country. You don't like what's going on on this earth. No. You seeking another one. And the Lord know that. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. But now they desire a better country. Now you desire a better country? Go ahead and read. That is in heavenly. That's heavenly. That's the one that's prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Go ahead and read. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Go ahead. For he had prepared for them a city. So he had prepared for you a city. Been prepared for you. But you have to become a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. You can't get, in, get caught up in all this bad doctrine. You can't caught up, get caught up and let people tell you you don't have to keep the commandments. Let's look at this city that he prepared. We looked at it again, but we're going to look at it again. We looked at it before, we're going to look at it again and go a little further. Back to Revelation 21st chapter. Yes, sir. This is the last place. I know some of the people are shocked. What? I don't know, maybe because I'm getting old. We're going to read about this city, he said. So because they were pilgrim, he prepared for them a city, right? 21 and verse 2. Then we're going to skip. Go ahead and read. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See, New Jerusalem is always pre prepared. But with Jesus, when he went, he prepared you a place in it. Because this is the Lord's house of many mansions. Okay? Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Go ahead. And showed me that great city, uh -huh. the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Coming out of heaven. You know, it's keep telling you it's coming down. Coming down. So why are you going if you're going to heaven? Go ahead and read. Having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Having the glory of God that means God was in it. He came with New Jerusalem. That's why you're dwelling in it right now. Go ahead and read. It had a wall great and high. It had 12 gates. 
And at the gate, 12 angels uh -huh. and names written their own, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Wait a minute. We've been told this is two leaf gate, 12 gates. Peter sitting on a table with a pen in his hand. What? Isn't this what they've been taught? Peter is God. Twelve gates. I let you know that if you're gonna get into this kingdom, you gotta go through God's priest, Israel. Because the tribe on each gate was written the name of the tribe of Israel. Yes. And Peter ain't watching each gate. You got angels standing by each gate. They the butlers. Skip down to verse 21. Go ahead. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Oh, you talking about going through them pearly gates? It's not two, it's 12 of them. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Every several gate was one pearl. Uh-huh. And the street of the city was pure gold. Oh, and the street of the city was pure gold. Yeah. So you ain't going to go up to glory. When I get to glory, I'm going to walk in the streets of gold. If you're going to go through them pearly gates and walk in the streets of gold, you're not going up yonder. You're going over there. Isn't that what we've been reading all afternoon? All afternoon. Finish that. And the, verse. and the streak of the city was pure gold as if it were transparent glass. So that's where the pearly gates are going to be in Jerusalem. The streets of gold are going to be in Jerusalem. And what about the rest of the world, all of them are going to be pressed in Jerusalem? Let's see. Skip now to verse 21, 24 rather. Verse 24 and read it. And the nations of them which are saved. Oh, you mean you got all, a whole nations going to be saved? Nations. Isn't that what it says? Yes, sir. Israel is one nation. The Lord tell you that in Ezekiel 37 chapter. He's going to take the two sticks with Joseph on one and Judah on one because they split after Solomon's death because of Solomon's behavior. He's going to make them two sticks one. And he said, Israel shall be one nation in my hand and they shall never be two again. So if, one, if Israel is one nation in his hand, then who are these nations here? The rest of the sons of Adam doesn't make That's it. That's right. You think God is just going to save the Hebrew Israelites? You think that? You're going to be in the lake of fire if you don't change your way of thinking. Finish that. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. So... The Lord set this earth up like he wanted it on day one. See, the Lord don't do no experimenting. He know what he want. He set it all over because he said he called the end from the beginning, didn't yes. he? So you're going to still have your nation in the places where the Lord has put them. The only difference is they're going to be immortal, they're going to be holy, and they're going to be God. Yep. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and remember one thing, sisters and brothers. Love is the fulfillment of the law. If you come to church, wherever part of the Israeli God is, and anywhere else, if you cannot love your sister and your brother, if you have ill conversation about and to your sisters and brothers, and you causing grief to your sisters and brothers, you are not a saint of God. You are on your way to the lake of fire. Now, if you stand and face Jerusalem, we're going to close it. Stand and face Jerusalem. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.